Hello everyone, welcome to Louise Singleton Creations and part 4 of the X-Tool F1 series. Today we're going to have some spooky Halloween fun. I'm going to be cutting wood and acrylic on my X-Tool F1 to create two fabulous Halloween projects. So if you fancy some Halloween inspiration, stay tuned and enjoy the video. The first thing I wanted to make was a basket for my granddaughter to put all her sweets in when she goes trick-or-treating. I did a Google search for an SVG file for a basket and this one came up and it turned out to be just the right size. I've got all my pieces arranged on two layers. This one needs doing twice and this other one is for the base and the handle and I've also added some pumpkins. I use the X-Tool Creative Space app on my iPad so unfortunately you can't see the cursor where I'm pointing. Using the iPad isn't ideal for showing you what I'm doing but that's what I use so I'm sorry about that. So in the app there are different shape options and there's a festivals part and so there's lots of different Halloween pictures in there and I thought I'd fill up the space so I'm not wasting any of my wood. There was quite a lot of space to fill up so I just filled it up with pumpkins and bats and made sure that I set them to cut because they were on engrave. You can tell when an image is set to be engraved because the colour will be solid. When you change it to cut, it will be an outline. I'm going to be making my basket out of wood and it's wood which was sent to me by X-Tool. So I'm presuming it's the 3mm basswood plywood that they uh, have on the settings. They've already got lots of settings for you to choose from. And uh, so if you buy something that's from X-Tool, you're you can be quite sure that the settings will suit the material quite well. But yeah, I'm not very good at identifying wood. It might not be balsa, I mean basswood, <laughs> it might be balsa. And I don't even know if they're different. Someone needs to educate me on the different kinds of wood, don't they? <laughs> As you will have seen from the size of my canvas, I had it set to cut on the slide extension. And so here it is on the slide extension, cutting away. And yeah, I do like it. I think it's so good to be able to do larger pieces with the slide extension. I'm just not so keen on the fact that you can't fully close the enclosure when you're using it. So you do get a little bit of smell from the wood. It's attached to the uh, pur purifier, which is also going out of the window. And that takes most of it. But yeah, you do get some of the smell from the wood, but not much. It's not as though you get smoke. It takes all the smoke out through the back. You know, th you can probably see it anyway, going through the fan. Um, but yeah, it's the smell. You do get a bit of smell, but I think wood smells nice anyway. <laughs> So here it is when it's all finished and as you pick up the wood all the pieces just fall out and come away perfectly so it cut really nicely and there's not too much of the um, smudging that you get around it either, you know the burn marks. But I'll show you how I'll get rid of those anyway. What you can do if you want to avoid getting that, you know the smoke or what would you call it, scorch marks? Yeah, if you want to avoid the scorch marks, you can cover your wood with decorator's tape first. But that's also a bit of a pain because then you've got to peel it all off afterwards. So yeah, I prefer to just clean the wood. And to clean the wood, I like to use a magic eraser and it's just damp. I just, you know, gave it a good squeeze after putting it in some soapy water and just gently rubbed the wood. And yeah, all the scorch marks just come off with the magic eraser. So that's one option. Or like I said before, you can put tape on it before cutting and that protects it from any scorch marks. And at the end of the day, I wasn't too worried because I'm going to be painting this and I'm going to be trying to make it look kind of mucky. <laughs> so you know with hindsight 
uh, when when you see the finished piece, I didn't really need to clean it at all because I wanted it to be kind of grungy and spooky looking. So yeah, I didn't need to do this step. Okay, so I didn't have a definite plan about how everything was going to be painted, but certain things I did know. A pumpkin has to be orange. So I painted all my pumpkins orange and yellow and green, obviously, with acrylic paint, and they came out very cute. And then I painted all my bats black, and these are going to be stuck onto the basket to make it look extra spooky. So I sprayed the parts for the basket with Rust-Oleum spray paint and the colour is Clotted Cream. Another step which it turned out wasn't completely necessary but it gave me a good canvas, a good starting point to work with. Anyway, I put some glue into all the slots, it's just PVA glue and then fitted it all together. The joints were very snug. It could have done to be slightly larger so those holes were bigger. But I had it as big as I could get it on the base plate, you know. So there's only a maximum size you can go to. And this was really pushing me to the limits. But we got there and I, with a bash of the hammer, <laughs> everything slotted together. Okay, so next it was time to make it look a little bit grubby. It's too clean and bright at the moment and it doesn't look scary at all. So I decided to use some acrylic paint. I got it on my brush and rubbed most of it off so that I could dry brush the fences. And when I'd finished it, I didn't actually like the look of it. It just didn't look right to me. It needed something extra. So I glued on my pumpkins and my bats to see if that would help, but it still didn't, I wasn't happy with it. It was just, there was something missing. And so I persevered and wished that I hadn't glued on the pumpkins and the bats because I came up with another idea. I remembered that in my box of ink from my paper crafting days I had s some bottles of distress ink that you just spray onto papers you know like when you're scrapbooking and card making you can spray on the distress inks and they look really good well I thought maybe I can spray it onto this and that will do it so I tried that and I just got carried away with it put loads on and in the end it looked much spookier and much more fitting for the theme after that I was much happier with it but there was still something missing and so I had some black acrylic which Xtool had also sent me and I decided to make some spider's webs and do and some more bats to decorate it with and once I had those stuck on it looked so much better. It's really hard to film the cutting of the black acrylic. You just can't really see what's happening. But I can show you what happened when I'd finished. Look at this. When you pick them up, all those little bits had already fallen out. And look how perfect that is. I think that this is perfect for making frames for resin art. So I think I'd like to make like some window art or dream catchers or something like that because it just makes such a perfect frame. So with all those cut out, I could stick them onto the basket and you're going to see the finished result very soon. But first of all, I'm going to quickly show you the spider that I made. I saw this file on Creative Fabrica and I just had to give it a try. You can find files all over the place on the internet. The world really is your oyster with this X-Tool F1. I cut out the black acrylic just in the same way as before using the 3mm gloss black acrylic settings that are already on the app. The only trouble was that I made it slightly too large and whereas where I made the basket the everything was too snug this was a little bit too loose and so I used hot melt glue to glue it all together and I know that's not ideal you're probably all thinking to yourself why are you using hot melt glue that's such a messy thing to use 
but it worked quickly and it held them in place you know with them being wobbly any other glue it would have been hard to do it and actually the hot melt glue worked really well especially the fact that it was so quick to set I could just sit there and get it done all in one go without having to wait for glue to dry so yeah and it didn't actually make that much mess it took me a while to work out how to put it all together and then I realized <laughs> that the file came with a little video and so yeah that showed me exactly how to put it together and it made it really simple so for a finishing touch, I decided to add some glass eyes, which I had. I got these for my resin frogs and uh, lizards. And I thought, oh, yeah, these will work perfectly for my spider. So I glued those on and that was the perfect finishing touch. And I'm hoping it doesn't scare my granddaughter too much because I'm going to be giving it to her. <laughs> Oh my goodness, I hope she likes it. <laughs> I hate spiders and my granddaughter's mother, my daughter, hates spiders even more than I do. So she might not appreciate it in the house, but hey ho, I wanted to make it. It looked like fun and it was fun. <laughs> so are you ready to see everything completed? Well, let's have a look. So here is the basket, once I'd finished spookifying it, <laughs> I've just made up my own word. And I think the acrylic webs and bats that I put on as an afterthought really do make a difference. And that's the great thing, you can just rustle these things up very, very quickly. And within minutes, you've got extra things to put onto your projects without any fuss at all. And here is the finished spider having an explore around and I think it looks great. I think it would be brilliant if you could put suction cups on the end of the legs and put them on a window and then just sit by the window and watch people's reactions when, when they walk past and see it out the corner of their eye. Can you imagine? <laughs> I think that would be great. But yeah, I love the spider. So when I chose to collaborate with Xtool, the agreement was that I would make three videos for them in exchange for the Xtool F1. And as you know, this is episode four. My videos are going to continue now out of choice because I am obsessed with the Xtool F1. And if you would like to try it out, please check out the link in the video description where you can get it a lot cheaper by using my link. And so, yeah, go and check out the savings that you can make. And I will see you again next time. Thank you for watching and bye for now.